in doing the transition town work, I've often felt a bit like a hobbit at the beginning of um, a big adventure story. And you liken the adventure ahead to a kind of myth. What are the essential elements uh, of myths and epic journeys that we can learn from in our current situation? Well, I think this is, a, this is a helpful, empowering perspective. Because when we look at problems of the world, it's easy to feel overwhelmed. It's easy to think, my God, you know, what can I do with all of these massive problems? But also, most great adventure stories begin from that place. You know, they begin from the place of some huge monster coming and munching out on communities or some evil lords. Or, and the main characters of the stories nearly always feel completely underpowered to respond. They feel, you know, like Frodo, not very tall, um, Harry Potter in the cupboard under the stairs. They're unlikely characters to, to play a major role in responding. And we can feel like that too. We can think, well, like, you know, who am I? Who am I to be able to have a meaningful response to all of this? Right. Yet the way great adventures continue and what makes them stories that people want to watch or read is when the main characters rise to the challenge. Yeah. And I think that that's what's needed in our times, is, is to ask the question, what helps us rise to the challenge to find our power to respond to what's going on? And usually the adventure story sequence is of a call to adventure. The call to adventure yes. is the beginning. And that's quite often an awareness of disturbing information. Mm. We become aware that there's a threat to the well-being of a community that calls us to respond. Mm and then begins the journey, and I use the term the journey approach to change. The journey approach to change, in the opening chapters, usually the main characters feel, my God, I, you know, I can't possibly do something, this is too big for me. But they begin the journey anyway, they're not put off, and there's a creativity principle called what comes before how. When you first decide what you want to do, then you look for how to do it. But if you've can't see how to do it and you give up at that point you'll never find a way yes, yes so it's that idea of first what then how so when you see disturbing information see that as your call to adventure that's what calls you onto the journey of looking for a response mm -hmm. and then you start looking for how and part of that looking for how is training ourselves training ourselves to develop the capacities to respond and I think of it as we need to um, develop our courage we need to increase our creativity. And also we need to look for positive examples of where changes have happened that have um, succeeded in areas where we first thought, you know, it, it can't happen. Mm. And um, in terms of one of the big concerns that Transition Town Lewis has set up to respond is the idea that, um, that we can't, we are over-dependent on oil. We're so dependent on oil that the idea of the world running out of it is terrifying. And people yes. kind of blank that view out. It's like, my God, you know, all our food supplies are dependent on industrial systems of agricultural production. Um, that countries like Britain import a lot of their food. Mm. And if there was um, a depletion in the world's oil supplies, which is what we're heading for, um, the government's own white paper, the UK government's own white paper on energy in 2003 mm -hmm. said that the world had about 30 years of oil left on current um, projected um, use. And they said that we might be able to double that with new discoveries and with new technology. So they were basically saying we've got 30 to 60 <laughs> years of oil left. But also, um, then they then went on to say, so there isn't much of a problem. <laughs> and it's kind of like this kind of a, a sort of strange kind of um, like these two things they don't fit together you know 30 to 60 years of oil left but there's not much of a problem and it's partly when problems are too big too overwhelming mm. people blank them out I see that happening in my work as an addiction specialist mm. in the health service mm. but also what I see is people who initially found it too much with the support of groups and training that help them rise to the challenge, that they can have a turning in which something that was too hard becomes easier to face. Mm. And, and a big part of that is um, there's, a, there's an expression in addiction to recovery groups of, I can't, we can. Yes, yes. When we face this as separate individuals, it's easy to feel it's too much, but we're always part of something larger. Mm. And one of the ideas that I find very helpful is to think of ourselves as like dots in a larger picture. Mm. 